Hello and welcome to Coding Projects. I'm Mark Lassoff. We've got a really cool project for you today because this project involves using a database. We're actually going to be using the MySQL database to store information from our application. Let's start off with a quick app demo. So this application is designed to store goals that someone may have. And the goals can either be completed or incompleted. And I have some kind of silly goals in here. But the first goal is an incomplete goal, take out the trash. If I click complete, that goal ends up in the complete goals section. And from there, I can delete any of the goals I have. I can add a new goal in the personal, professional, or other category. Let's say professional. And let's say my goal is to learn to use databases with PHP, probably an appropriate goal for this video. And then we get to put a date on the goal. I'm going to say July 19th. I'm not going to check goal completed, and I'm going to click Submit Goal. Now what's happening behind the scenes is the information I just entered is stored in the database. And anytime I do something like, for example, press the button to complete the goal, we're actually manipulating the database behind the scenes. All right, so that's basically how the app works. It's pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Let's take a look at the actual database. The database is a MySQL database. And I'm running here a local host, meaning I'm running a server on my machine that's actually generating the results of the PHP and the database. It's the one I'm running is called MAMP, and you can download MAMP. That's for Macintosh, Mac, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, M-A-M-P. You can Google search it and find it. For Windows, there's one called WAMP. There's also XAMPP. There's a few of these that you can use for local testing, and the idea is to simulate an actual server running on your laptop or desktop. Okay, so here I'm running the server, and I'm gonna go to Tools, and PHP My Admin lets us administrate the MySQL database. And in here, you'll notice there are several databases that already exist. And the goals database is the one from our app. And now we're actually looking at the structure of the goals database. It's got a simple structure. It's got one table. And the table is just a place to organize information inside of an app. And we're going to go ahead, or inside of a database, rather. And we're going to look at that table. And we can see that each goal has a goal ID goal category, goal text, a date, and whether or not it's complete. So here you can see the goal I just entered. It was automatically assigned a goal ID of 13, a goal category of 1, which represents professional goals. The goal text is learn to use databases with PHP, and the goal date is July 19, 2019. Zero means the goal is incomplete. So this is the database inside of this PHP My Admin application. The way we actually communicate with the database in code is using the SQL language. So I can go ahead and put in a SQL command here, like select star from, and let's say, goals, which means select everything from the table goals, and then click go to run that command, and it shows us all of the information in goals all the information here in the table. We can modify that, for example, let's say we only want to show where goal complete equals zero. So again, select star from goals, gives you a little help here, where goal complete equals zero. So now, if we run this version of the query, we only get the data back with a goal complete equals zero. Now, this is a little tiny database. Most databases you're going to make for most applications are going to be a lot more complicated than that. But this is good to get you started. 
All right, you should note that, by the way, you can only communicate with the MySQL database using a server-side language like PHP. You can't communicate with it directly using JavaScript. So if we look at the files we have here, we have index.php, which contains our HTML and some of the PHP that makes this application work. We've got connect.php, which connects us to the database. Delete.php, which deletes files from the database. Goals.css, which simply provides the CSS for the visual look that you see here. Index.php, which is the file we're looking at. Insert goal.php, which inserts a goal into the database. And then we simply have the README, which I created when I created a repository for this code. So we'll start with the index, because when we load, we load the index page. And if when we load the index page, if we start here, we have our doc type and our HTML tag. Inside the head, I'm linking to a couple of different style sheets here. And I'm actually using a style uh, library called Milligram. And you can see the connection here. I'm connecting to it live. Milligram is a minimal CSS framework that provides us with this nice look without having to do a whole lot out of the box. So the look that you see was created by Milligram. It wasn't really me styling the CSS, except for a couple things that I did that we'll take a look at. Title of our app is Goal Tracker. And that's the end of our head. So now our actual content here, you can see I've put in a logical division called container. And there's the H1 for the words new goal, which you can see on the left. And then we have our form. Notice the action for the form is to send the form data to insert goal.php via the method post. Easy enough. Then we have our label for the category dropdown. And that has prof personal, professional, or other. Notice that these have a value of 0, 1, 2, or 3. And what that means is when the data is returned to the server, not the words personal, professional, or other, but the value 0, 1, 2, or 3 are what's going to be returned. We then have the text area where the user will enter the goal with its label, right on lines 21 and 22. We have the label for the goal date. And then we have input type equals date. And that's what gives us this nice calendar dropdown for the date. We've ID'd it as goal date, and we've named it as goal date. These name attributes are important because the name attributes are what's going to label each of the individual data points when it's sent to the PHP to process. Then finally, we have our goal completed checkbox on 25 and 26. And simply there, the user can check if they're entering a completed goal into the database. And then we have our submit button. Notice the button type is submit and text on it is submit goal. Because the type is submit, when the user clicks the button, the action is going to occur in that insert goal.php is going to load. Now, below the button is all dynamic content. It's all generated from whatever is in the database and changes when the database changes. So notice on line 29, we start coding in PHP. Also notice this file is saved as index.php. So this way the server knows to process the PHP before sending the data back. So first thing we do is require once connect.php, which essentially means take the code from connect.php and insert it here. Require once means we just don't load that code more than once. So here is the code that connects to the database. Now, because I'm testing on my laptop locally, I did this in a way that's not particularly secure. I don't recommend doing it this way. You'll see what I mean in a second. You're gonna to wanna to use a secure database in production when your application is out there for everyone to use on the internet. 
So here I've set variables, dollar sign precedes variable names in PHP for a username of root, a password of root, database goals, remember that was the name of our database when we looked in PHP My Admin. Host is localhost and the port usually for MySQL databases is 8889. So stored that all in variables. So what's insecure here is using a username and a password of root. Obviously again, you'd never do this in production. However, for testing it's okay because I didn't want to configure the database and this app isn't going to leave my desktop. So first thing we do is we run the command mysql, i stands for improved underscore init. This initializes the database and it returns the database link to the variable link. I created a variable called success and here we're going to connect to the database by sending it the link, the host, the username, the password, the database and port. Here we have the database connection. Success here, we could run an if statement around that to see if this connection was successful if we wanted to, because this will return a value if our connection was successful. So that connects to the database. So this MySQL code is, excuse me, this PHP code is connecting us to the MySQL database. Now that we're connected to the database, you'll remember that I created a SQL statement when we were using the admin application. That's how we have to communicate with the database in our code. So I stored the SQL database, SQL statement in a variable called SQL, SQL. There it is on line 31. So we're gonna select star from goals, which means just give me all the data in the table goals. And now we're actually going to run that query. Remember, because we just stored the SQL statement. Now we have to run it and we'll store whatever comes back in this variable called result. So we run a query in the database with the MySQL I for improved underscore query method. We pass it the link to the database, which you'll remember from right here. That's our link. So we'll pass it the link from the database and the SQL code. Now dramatically, if it doesn't work, our application's going to die. Very dramatic. The die statement essentially means stop executing the application and here we print out whatever SQL error we got. Since we're connecting fine, this die statement doesn't run. So now result holds the results of the database query, right? Essentially, result is holding now the result of select star from goals it runs this query and it returns this data. It doesn't return it formatted like this, it returns it like an object. So that data is now stored inside the variable results. Since we have multiple results, we'll have to loop through that variable in order to get what we want. So we'll first print out the label incomplete goals. And remember I just said we're gonna loop through the results so if we're gonna loop, we'll use a while statement. So we're gonna loop through all the results and each row is gonna be returned to the variable row. So we use MySQL fetch array to take the result and take each row, and return it as an array. So row now holds an array. The array has the information from each record. So row goal complete for each row is coming from the database right here, goal complete, either one, one, or zero, right? So I'm testing first if the goal is complete or not, because I want to know whether I'm going to display that goal here with incomplete goals or with complete goals. So if goal complete equals zero, then we're going to display it here because the goal is incomplete we'll get the goal category. If the goal category is zero, we know that's a personal goal. If the goal category is one, we know that's a professional goal, otherwise it's over. We'll store whatever the category is in a variable called cat. Because remember again, this dropdown, based on what the user chooses, zero, one, or two. 
Then for each goal, we're gonna create this output. Each output, each goal is output in these purple boxes. So we're gonna create that by creating a logical division. Notice how we're creating the HTML right here in the PHP. Because so your browser doesn't understand PHP. We've got to send HTML that the browser can parse back through the server to the user's browser. So we're gonna create a div with the class goal. We're gonna create a link for this complete button. So if the user selects the button, it is linked to the file complete.php, and we're gonna send the record ID. Remember that each of these has a goal ID. And that's how we identify the individual records. In fact, our goal ID here is the actual primary key for our database. The primary key is the field in a database table that has to be unique. We're creating an individual unique number for each record. So we're gonna return that to the complete.php file, which takes the record and sets the value of the complete field to one indicating it's completed. So this line 46 here creates that button with the word complete on it and our link. It also then displays the category stored in cat, the text of the goal, and the goal date all stored in the database. Now again, this is coming from the individual row we're on in the database. So to summarize, what this loop does is it loops through each record in the database, selecting only those where goal complete is zero. The goal is incomplete, selects the category based on the goal category field in the database, which holds a zero, one, or two, and then displays or creates the output, which are these purple boxes. We go through the same process for complete goals, because the complete goals display below this H2 right here, where it says complete goals. We again query the database. We get from passing the link and the SQL, the results. Now, this is actually not the most efficient way to do this. This is the clearest way. And since this video really is for people getting started with app development, I wanted to be clear. We are actually querying the database here twice when we only really have to query it once. But maybe you can take the code and redesign it so it's more efficient. For right now, this works fine for our purposes. So again, we're storing the results. This time, we're looking for goal complete to not be zero. So if goal complete is not equal to zero, then we know that the goal is complete. And we can again go through get the category and create the display. So when we create a goal, learn how to create games with C++, put a date in there. When we create a goal, it's initially incomplete and is processed with our incomplete goals, there we go, right there starting on 35. Once that complete button is clicked, it's listed with the complete goals. Only difference here when creating this is instead of creating a complete button, we create a delete button. This reference is delete.php and passes the ID. All right, so let's take a look at how, when you actually fill this form out, how the goal is stored in our database. So you'll remember from our form, when the form is submitted by the submit goal button being clicked, the insert goal.php form is run and the data from our form is passed to it. So let's go ahead and look at insert goal.php. 
There we go. So again, we're going to connect to the database. You've got to connect to the database each time you run a new PHP page that uses it. The database connection isn't persistent. Each individual script has to connect to the database. And now these values are being passed by the form. So we use the super global array request to get the category, which is stored in the variable category, to get the text of the goal, which is stored in the variable text, get the goal date, which is stored in the date, and get whether or not it's complete, which is stored in complete. And again, these labels come from the name attribute of each value in the form. There's goal date. I typically set these to the same as the ID to avoid confusion. There's no reason that these can't be the same. Okay, so now we're going to take this information that's been sent and we're going to actually send it to the database. So here I'm testing to make sure that complete, if it's blank or null, we're going to set complete to zero. And now we're going to create the SQL statement to insert this into the database. So insert into the table goals, into the fields, goal category, goal text, goal date, and goal complete, right? I'm not making those up. Those come from our field names in the database. Goal ID, goal category, goal text, goal date, goal complete. And we're going to insert the values that have been passed from the form. So we're going to pass category, text, date, and complete. All of this complexity in here is about getting the SQL statement syntax right with a series of single quotes inside of double quotes. This takes some practice. Even I got it wrong a couple of times. It's really hard to do, but you get kind of used to it. We're creating the SQL statement, which has to have single quotes around the individual values from concatenating various strings together. All right, so you can see exactly how that's done. Just a note, if you're not familiar with PHP, the concatenation character is dot, not plus. So that's why you're seeing these dots here to essentially glue our SQL statement together. So now we have our entire SQL statement insert into goals, etc., with the information passed from the form. Now we're going to run the SQL statement, and you've seen this already. My SQL query passed the link which came from the connect and the SQL itself that came from up here when we concatenated all that jazz together. And now that'll store it. It'll either store or fail. This returns true if the operation went okay. So we'll print stored. It happens too quickly for you to see because as soon as we store it, we run this little bit of JavaScript here by printing it out, which sets the location of the window back to index.php. So you'll notice as soon as we store something in the database, learn how to set proper goals, right? As soon as we store something in the database, it goes right back to the screen and it displays now with the information that we've added or changed in the database. So that's to store new data. Now you'll remember, and you can see here, the complete and delete buttons also run a database operation from different PHP scripts. What complete does is it changes the value of the complete field for that record in the database. So it changes goal complete to one from zero. So learn how to use databases with PHP is currently zero. I think we need to update our database here. Let's refresh. And there we go. So learn how to set proper goals is currently zero. If we go ahead and complete that goal, learn how to set proper goals. I press complete. It's now down here with the complete goals. Learn how to set proper goals. And what happened was, if we look at the database itself, 
the value in the database for goal complete change to one. So that's done by the page called complete.php. So we'll look at that one next. And all this is going to do is flip that one value in the database. So we've got our connect.php. We've got our request ID, which is which record are we doing this for? Because we've passed the record's individual ID when we press the button. Write that ID right from the goal ID column. So that's being passed. And this time the SQL we're running is the SQL update system set statement. Update from the table goals, set goal complete equal to one where the goal ID is equal to the ID passed. Again, we'll use the MySQL improved query statement, pass it the link in the SQL statement, either stored or failed, and go back to the index page. So it appears seamless to the user because as soon as we hit complete, the page redisplays and the category for our actual goal is changed to complete. All right, there's only one other operation here and that's the delete operation. This works much the same way as the complete operation. We click delete. It runs delete.php, passes it the record, and deletes that particular goal. So again, require our database connection. Get the ID that was passed to it, and the SQL to delete something, no big surprise here, is the SQL delete statement. So delete from the table goals, where the goal ID is equal to the ID that was passed. Use the MySQL query command, pass it the link and the SQL, and it's either stored or it fails. Then we go back to index.php. The only thing left to look at here is the CSS. This is a complete CRUD app at this point. CRUD standing for Create, Retrieve, Update, Delete. You'll hear that term a lot for exactly this type of app, an app that simply interacts with some kind of database. So let's take a look at our CSS, goals.css. It's fairly simple what we did here. We have our container with the margin 10 pixels, gives us this little bit of space around the edges. Remember each one of these purple divs is the class goal right here. We gave it a one pixel solid gray border. We gave it a background color of purple, a text color of white, a margin bottom of 10 pixels to give us some space between each goal, padding of 10 pixels to pull the text and the button away from the edge, border radius of five pixels to make it round, and a little bit of drop shadow. For the paragraph tag within the goal, we just increased the font size a little bit. And then for our buttons, we simply floated them over to the right to put them on the right side of the actual goal div that's been created. We did that for both the complete button and the delete button. And there you have it, a complete PHP app that uses the MySQL database to create, retrieve, update, and delete records. I really do hope you enjoyed examining this app with me. I'm Mark Lassoff. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give us a like and subscribe. We'd love to see you next time. Thanks for watching.